In this screencast, we are going to look at different types of discriminating monopolies, and we're going to compare it to the pure monopoly. So in the pure monopoly, we have a graph that looks like this, where you have your downward sloping demand curve that equals your average revenue and price. You have a marginal revenue curve that's less than your demand curve. In order to figure out the profit maximizing output, you go where MR equals MC. In order to figure out the price at that quantity, you go up to the demand curve, and that gives you the price that the pure monopolist will charge. Um, economic profit is price minus ATC times quantity. And so again, at that profit maximizing output, at that price minus the ATC times the quantity, this blue area here gives you the economic profit. So another way to look at way things are sold is with the purely discriminating monopoly. And what happens here is that this is a seller who can, is selling their product at different prices to everybody. So uh, take for example like a flea market. At a flea market, uh, everybody, uh, you go and you negotiate the price that you want to pay for something. So let's say you and a friend are at a flea market and you see a scarf that you like. And you go up to the person and you negotiate a price and you're willing and able to pay it here on the demand curve. Well, that's where you're going to pay. Your friend goes up and they negotiate a price and they're willing and able to pay at this place on the demand curve. And the next person that comes up, maybe they're willing and able to pay at this point on the demand curve. So everybody is willing and able to pay at different prices and that's the price that it gets sold to them at. So that's why, if you notice the difference here, the demand curve in, in this case is equal to the marginal revenue, as opposed to the demand curve being less than, or it, the marginal revenue curve being less than the demand curve. And again, remember, for pure monopoly, the marginal revenue is less than the demand curve, because with each additional unit that is produced, you lower the price not just for that unit, but for all previous units. Um, we're not lowering the price of all previous units here. Everybody is being sold something at a different price, so demand equals marginal revenue. In order to figure out the profit maximizing output, you're still using the same formula here of MR equals MC. And so one thing to notice here is that in the same demand curve and cost curves that you have on these two graphs, the purely discriminating monopoly will produce a larger amount than the um, pure monopoly. So this is a C that's located on the pure monopoly and it's also transferred over onto this graph. So you can see the quantity is less of the pure monopolist than it is of the purely discriminating monopolist. Um, one difference though is in calculating economic profit. For economic profit, uh, you can't use price minus ATC times quantity because all your prices are different. And so in order to figure out total revenue, you have to add up each of the individual prices that the product was sold at. Finding total cost um, is the cost to make the scarf was the same for everybody. And so the per unit costs are identical. You just multiply that by the quantity that was sold and that will give you your total cost. So to figure out the economic profit of a purely discriminating monopoly, you use total revenue minus total cost. And one thing to note here is look at how much larger the economic profit is when you can purely discriminate. Now, even though this is located in a, the monopoly chapter, the examples that you find for discriminating monopolists really apply to oligopolies and monopolistic competition. So um, don't think that it's just pertaining to monopolists. It just so happens to be located in this section of your book. Another way that you can discriminate is by segmenting the market. And there's different ways that you can segment the market. You can do it based upon age. You could do it based upon criteria that you fit into. Um, it could be different times of the day. So there's just many ways to segment the market. Uh, take, for example, the train tickets. A person who has a student ID pays a less of a rate on the train than a person who doesn't have a student ID. So you're segmenting the market in that way. And when you look at what you when you look at that on a graph, what you do then is that those that don't have a student ID, they would pay a higher price. And so this would be the quantity of people who are willing and able to pay at the high price. The total revenue that you get for this group would be the price 
times the quantity, and that would give you the total revenue. Now, for those with the student ID, they're going to pay a lower price, and so they are more willing and able to consume it, and so you have a larger total revenue going on here that's within this group. And so this is the group that you see here where their total revenue would be the quantity that falls into this segment of the student IDs times the price that it is being sold at. When you look at the total revenue, the entire total revenue, you would then um, add up these two areas here in order to figure out the entire total revenue. Now, when we talk about the total cost, Notice here that instead of having the ATC and the marginal cost curve like what we're used to seeing, they've kind of made it a little easier here just to recognize it. Because the per unit cost is going to be identical no matter what quantity you are at. So you have this constant cost industry here that you can just utilize by having a straight line going across with your marginal cost equaling your average total cost. Either one is utilized on a test, and so you just want to be familiar with seeing both of them. So when I'm looking at my economic profit, I have to take my total revenue and minus the total cost, which is right here, this box of ATC times quantity. So the amount of economic profit for those that don't have a student ID would be this green area here, and the economic profit for those with a student ID would be this green area here because you're looking at this part of the market that's been segmented. When you look at the difference here between the perfectly discriminating monopolist who is selling it at each of the individual prices that people are willing and able, and here you have the cost that it takes to sell it, you can see that the profit with the purely discriminating monopolist is larger. So if you don't have to segment the market, you can make more of an economic profit, but at the same time, um, as a way to make more of a profit than a pure monopoly, you can segment the market into different areas. Another thing to think about is consumer surplus with discriminating monopolies. Um, you want to be able to calculate the consumer surplus. The purely discriminating monopoly, they're selling it at what everybody is willing and able to buy it at. So therefore, there is no consumer surplus because it's always going to be where it is hitting the demand curve. Remember, consumer surplus is where you're willing and able to pay for something, but you don't have to because the price is lower. Well, you don't have that here. There's no below the demand curve and above the price. So there is no consumer surplus for a perfectly discriminating monopoly. However, for those that are segmenting the market, you do have consumer surplus. Because this, again, going back to the tickets for the train, um, for those that don't have the student ID, you're willing and able to pay up here, but you don't have to because you are paying this price right here. So your consumer surplus is going to be this white triangle that you see there for that group that has been segmented as the no student ID. For those with the student ID, you're willing and able for this quantity here that you have, you're willing and able to pay a higher price, but you don't have to because the price has been set lower. So your consumer surplus is going to be this triangle here um, when calculating that.